And so we're going to write some code for another tree, this case, the binary tree. We're going to eventually use it with this decision tree demo, which captures what we saw on the slides in terms of like guessing what type of animal it is based on the questions. So we'll see things where we make new binary trees um, and then uh, put them together. And I'll explain more like how this is structured. So let's look at binary tree to start. Um, some things will be familiar. It still has a root just like we had before. If we look down here at the node object, the node object is going to be a little bit different. So let's code the node first. We still need data. That's not different. That's the same. But we don't need a list of children because a binary tree has at most two children. So we can just do this dot root. Oh, I'm sorry. We can just do public ob public node left and public node right. So node can only have two children, and we're going to refer to it as left and right because left will be true and right will be false when we use it as our decision tree. So the node is slightly different, just a little. We have three different constructors. The default constructor constructs an empty tree. There's a constructor that takes the data for the root, and there's a constructor that takes the data for the root, and then a left subtree and a right subtree all in the constructor. So we don't have an add subtree method like we had before. We instead have this constructor that takes other trees. So this means we're going to build our decision tree, our binary tree, from like the leaves up. So let's just code a couple of these. We'll wrap up the rest tomorrow. An empty tree is a tree whose root is null. Okay, that's how we're gonna define an empty tree. So again, when we create a new tree, root will be initialized to null, but let's be explicit. So it's clear like that is truly what we intend. If this constructor is called, then root won't be null. We actually have some data for the root. So we need to do very similar to what we did before. We need to make a new node. We need to initialize that root node's data to the specified data. And we could really stop here, but again, in terms of like just more clarity with our code, let's be explicit that the left child is null and the right child is null as well. So we don't need, have to have those two lines of code, but I think it makes it clear like we do intend the left and right children to both be null. All right, one more constructor. Here we have the root data and we have a left tree and a right tree. So we have to capture all of that. And this is where, I don't know, this is where I, I, um, I can sometimes, I sometimes make mistakes. So we, we could copy and paste this down here. A better approach is to use the this operator and to call the other constructor. I don't know if this shows up much in AP computer science, but when we have this and then parentheses at the start of a constructor, it basically says call a different constructor that takes one parameter of type object. So it's going to jump up here, run through these four lines of code, and then it's going to come back here and we can initialize left and right as we want. So we can say this.root.left equals left.root. Uh, I didn't fall in the trap. I remembered I need the reference to the node, not the tree. This.root.write equals write.root. And that's how we link up our tree. With simply these three constructors, we can build any arbitrary binary tree. That's all we need. Okay. And Thursday, when we pick this back up, we will look at this code um, and step through this and better understand like what this does. But we've already implemented the binary tree class sufficiently to use it as a decision tree. 
which is pretty cool. All right, we're going to stop here for today. And last time, we made a lot of good progress. Last time, we wrote three different constructors for our binary tree. One that constructs an empty tree, which means root is null. One which constructs a tree with one node and no children. So we made a new node. We initialized the data. The left and right child are both null. And then one that constructs a binary tree where we specify not only the data for the root, but the entire left subtree and the entire right subtree. And so we called the other constructor to make the new node and initialize the root data. And then we update the left and right children of that node. Um, I want to finish a couple more methods here and show you a different way of um, implementing methods like size, or in this case, height. What we did earlier in the week with the arbitrary tree class is we added a method to the node class to help us calculate the size, okay? And that works really, that's one way we can do this type of recursive method. Here's another approach. Um, this is where we add a static helper method. This is more similar to what we did with the linked list class. Um, so here is the public method height. It takes no parameters, and it needs to return the height of the tree. Um, we're going to use the same strategy we used with the linked list class in chapter 16. We are going to have a private static helper, re recursive helper method here that takes that critical parameter that we need for recursion, which is calculate the height starting from this node, okay? So this, this parameter n is the node at which we're going to start calculating the height from. It's going to return the height of the subtree starting at node n. So the strategy we used before, and we're going to use it again here, is in the public method, we're simply going to call the recursive helper method. So we're simply going to say binary tree dot height, and we want to start calculating the height of the tree from the root. So we're going to pass in the root to this. So when we use this approach with the um, recursive helper method, the private one, the, implementing the public method is super easy. We just call the recursive helper method and pass along the root node. Okay? All of the work is done in here. But still, we don't want to do a lot of work because we're lazy. Um, and that's one of the tenets of recursion. So let's write this recursively and let's start with the terminating condition. What is the simplest tree to calculate the height of? What's that? No children would be fairly simple. What's even simpler than that? What's that? Yeah, or a tree that doesn't exist, or let's say a tree with no nodes. Okay, because that's pretty uh, pretty easy to count to one. It's even easier to count to zero. So that can be our terminating condition. We can say if n equals null, that means this tree has no nodes, and the height of a tree with no nodes is zero. That's the easiest tree to calculate the height for. Otherwise, we have to do a little bit of work, but we want to take one small step toward the solution and then rely on recursion to solve the rest of the problem. So if we are, if n is not null, that means we at least have a node, the node that n refers to, and so we can say, let's return one because n being not null means we at least have a height of one. And then let's calculate the height of all of our descendants. And we have a left child and a right child. One of the two of them might have a greater height than the other. So we want to add the maximum. So we'll call the math.max method. The maximum of calling height on the left subtree and calling height on the right subtree.
So they're a classic recursive solution, but here we're using a static recursive helper method um, within the tree class. We're not using the node itself. I think this is a more appropriate strategy here. Part of the decisions you have to make in the upcoming practice programming activities, not the first one, I'll help you out with the first one, is which approach do you take? Do you do the private static help recursive helper method in the tree class, or do you add a method to the node class? Both are applicable. It just kind of depends on which one's going to lead to a cleaner solution. So, all right. Uh, we got a couple more methods. Let's knock these out quickly, and then we'll run the test code. So we have an is empty method. We want this to return true if the tree is empty. So we're going to say return this dot root equals null. If the root is null, the tree is empty. We define that up in our default constructor. All right, let's look at the next method. The data method gets the data at the root of this tree. So we want to return that data. So that would be this.root.data. That's not too bad. We have a couple more accessor methods here. I bet you can fill these in. Um, actually, this is a little bit more tricky. All right, so here, actually, this is a good thing. Um, I'm cruising through this. I'm not reading very carefully. So I say this.root.left. I bet someone else already typed that. Um, doesn't compile. All right, 20 seconds. Discuss with your neighbor. Why doesn't this compile? And how do I implement this method? So you actually need to be talking to your neighbor, like verbally. I should be able to hear things. All right. Just the answer to the first question. Why doesn't this compile? Just that part. Yeah, left is a reference to a node, not a reference to a binary tree. So the types don't match. That's why it doesn't compile. How do I fix this? How should I implement this method? What do I need to do? Good. Yeah, can you be more specific about what you mean by create a subtree? That's okay. No, totally fine. But you're right. We do need to create a subtree. How would we do that? Yeah, we need to make an actual new, we do need to make a new subtree. And the way we do that is by saying new binary tree. And then we can say subtree.root equals this.root.left. And we can return that subtree. Here's an important thing. We need to return a reference to a binary tree. But we want it to still be, we want this, this subtree is still part of the bigger tree that we're in right now. So we don't want to call this constructor because this constructor, if we specified the data for the left child and then the left child's left tree and right tree, like we would end up with like a copy, a partial copy of the tree and we wouldn't, our references wouldn't be to the same nodes anymore. So that's why we take this approach here instead. All right, let's do right really quick here. Binary tree, subtree. This is gonna be really similar. Cool. 